Hello and welcome. I am so glad you're here. I'm Beth, a creator-based coach with CMH Coaching for Life. I'm here today to help you and those you love create a life you feel grounded and at home in. Think of a life where you feel peace, love for those around you, and in a flow with just enough challenge to keep you happy and creating something wonderful. Sounds like magic, but it's not. You can create that life every single day. You can have a life full of love, excitement, hope, and creation. Our mission at CMH Coaching is to flood the earth with light through compassion, mindfulness, and hope. And I'm going to ask a favor of you. If you like what you see and hear today, think of someone you know that would enjoy and benefit from this message. Our mission is to flood the world with compassion, mindfulness, and hope. Share this with them. But for now, this is time just for you. So settle into whatever you're doing and enjoy this time with the girls where we create that one awesome, amazing, perfect life every one of us is seeking. Welcome. We are really glad to see everybody today and to be here for a creator-based life because this is our podcast for CMH Coaching and we empower women of faith to create the lives they love, the lives they have always wanted. And I'm here with my friends, Jacine Bonnet. Jacine's a business coach. She's a mom and a grandma and an avid runner. And Jennifer DeRoos, who is a hypno coach a grow anything gardener. Oh, a hypnotherapist. Sorry. A okay. grow anything gardener. Too. And, and a coach. She's a coach too. So there you go. She's got a double whammy to offer. And I'm Beth, a master life coach, the author and creator of the creator based way and the book, create your one awesome, amazing, perfect life. Hmm. Cause life can be just amazingly perfect. But today we're talking about echoes. And I'm pretty excited about this. Do you guys uh, were in face? I mean, in I saw the post today with Jacine mm-hmm. in the club this week. We are reading Marley, right? Yep. Jacob T. Marley. Yep. Jacob T. Marley. Can you tell us just a teeny bit about Jacob T. Marley? Uh, Jen, I'm going to let you know. <laughs> so, you probably need to know his context in just a teeny bit. Just it's tell us a story of... Yeah. Ebenezer Scrooge's Ebenezer Scrooge's um previous like boss or whatever. You know, it's the first ghost that visits him, Jacob T. Marley. Oh. It's it's and you know it's not one of the ghosts of Christmas past, but it is the ghost of, of Marley that comes and says, Oh and isn't he the one all in chains? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. oh okay. okay. So it's his story of how he got to be that way. Oh. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be good. It is really good. I, I, I'm on to chapter three now, and it's very well written because uh-huh. I, I, visit, I visited the Christmas story you know, to, to read that again. And just sometimes that old English just gets me hard. It's yeah, hard. It's handy. It can be hard to read. Yeah. yeah and so this one, it was, it's, it's really nice. Ooh, mm-hmm. I'm excited. Well, and it's right in line with what we're talking about this. Oh, week. yes. Oh, my gosh. Christmas oh. past, right? Because. <laughs> Yeah, he's, the, he's the guy in chains. It's all rattling. Do you guys have echoes from Christmas past that are chained like that? <laughs> that are all rattling and in chains and oh my gosh, things that happened in Christmas past? Or are all of your Christmases past glowy and rosy and perfect? Oh no. <laughs> Is that real? I mean, maybe they're not so bad that they're in chains, right? Yeah. Is that is that a real thing? I. It's funny. Like, Mine goes back to when I was a child Uh and my younger brother, just uh, 16 months younger than me, um, we weren't well off. And so we got one toy from Santa and one toy from mom and dad. And usually from mom and dad, it was a homemade gift, you know, and I had some beautiful homemade stuffed animals that I wish I still had, but um. Anyway, I just, the 
that Christmas day or the day after Christmas, my younger brother, Keith, got into my toy that I had gotten for Christmas and oh. destroyed, he destroyed oh. it. Like, and it's funny, you know, cause that was, I was probably seven years old and I remember just hiding my toys from Keith anytime. anytime I got, yeah. He was also the brother that cut the fingers, yeah. the fingers off my Barbies, my two Barbies that I had. Yeah. No, he, yeah. So, <laughs> so that was so my, my Christmas echoes of Christmas past. And it's interesting mm. how those thoughts come up, but you can also chase them away because I've had so many more really, really good Christmases, right? Well, that's the beauty of agency. You get to choose what's in your head. Just because it pops up doesn't mean you have to keep it. Well, and I would even say that these echoes don't have to be good or bad. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah cause, cause think about yeah. it. You're having all these echoes of, cause that's what I feel in the season. I get excited. I love the season cause I love the way it feels and the smells and things like that. That's an echo. Yeah. But you yeah. Have had those experiences like you were one mm -hmm. particularly bad Christmas. Yeah. That's an echo. You it know, just so the smell of the pine wreath on the door. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just takes you back. So you can have like pleasant echoes and not so pleasant echoes. Mm -hmm. It's all about what chemical is being created in your body with what you're yeah. experiencing. Yeah, I love it. And I love I love that you brought that up, Jen, because it really does help us to when we ha maybe have a Christmas or something that happens during the season that reminds us of something that was unpleasant. We have those other things that we can remember and go back to, to bring us into that peace and that, you know, which is what the season is all about, right? Yeah. The peace and the peace of Christ. So I, want, I love that. I wonder if that's why Christmas season is really hard for people is because it's, it's like they're jockeying between I've had good ones, I've had bad ones. And so they keep you know back and forth, back and forth, feeling the different feels. So who it knows? Be, I know for my folks, when they got older, their Christmases were hard because they didn't opt in to remember the good ones. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As, as life became more challenging for them, they didn't opt in to remember the good stuff. And right. so all you've got is the disappointments that makes for a pretty tough life. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that you can choose, mm -hmm. you know, if you're choosing, like you said, you can choose to just have memories, not necessarily assign anything good or bad to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But yeah. you get to choose what's in your head. Now that we're talking, like my first year, my dad died near, near Thanksgiving time and that first Christmas, right? Yeah. Super yeah. hard, super hard. And the year before that is when I escaped an abusive marriage with my two little boys. And wow. so, I mean, yeah, you, I'm looking that back. That was a tough like, few years. Those are like big deals, but I don't often recall those because I don't want to spend time recalling those. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned and I grew and I survived. I survived, right? Yeah. And that's the beauty you of it. We survived. With it. Yeah. Do I another day. Yeah. 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 Well, and the reason we were talking about Echoes past is because of last month's book, a book club. Mm hmm. Last month's book club was Alex Howard. It's not your fault. And he uses the acronym for echo. And when you start kind of trying to tease apart your feelings about the holidays, this echo acronym is really helpful. In echo, the E stands for the event. So we could talk about Jacine's stuffed animal being ruined. That's an event. Then the C is the context of the event, which I'm sure is very different today than it was the day that it happened. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the H, like Jen talked about, the homeostatic shift, the thought and what happened there and how it turns into the chemicals from the brain and then stores in the tissues of the body, unless, of course, we're lucky enough to have it pass all the way through. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times it stores and then that colors Christmas is moving forward. What did you want to say, Jen? I, I just think that, I mean, if it's bothering you, if you're having a reaction to it, then you're, it's still stored. 
Right. It's still you need stored. to adjust. You need to uh, address it somehow. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. And the O for echo is the outcome of having it stored that coming up again, like Jen said, every mm -hmm. time just keeps coming up and over and over again. This um, Thomas McConkie said about the homeostatic shift, which I thought was really interesting. He says, when intense emotions overwhelm us during an event, there's the E again, mm -hmm. our bodies generate a surge of chemicals and this overflow or this overwhelm. I never really thought of the surge of chemicals as being overflow or overwhelm. Um, let's see, I've got to find my spot again. Necessitates a redirection to prevent an adverse impact on our well being. Mm -hmm. The stored emotions, just like Jen said, may surface during an echo triggering a powerful re-experience of those feelings. And so when we recognize the echoes, that's really the first step in healing the echoes. Like for you to be able to talk about, yeah. that really must have hurt as a little kid to have your brand new toy destroyed by your brother. I can't even imagine. Yeah, no, I was very yeah. angry. Yeah, <laughs> and it would have been easy to keep that anger perpetuated for a long time. And I think that that colors as adults, especially the adult experiences we have at the holidays, if those echoes aren't dealt with so many people, we were at church yesterday. I don't know how many people just stood up and said, I don't like the holidays. Mm -hmm. I don't like them because of this, uh, because they perpetuate capitalism, or I don't like them because I feel guilty, or I don't like them because they bring up bad emotions or bad memories. Those are all echoes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's but this, we, don't, we don't have to live with that. We don't. I love I, it reminded me of a quote that I wrote down from a, a book called Sisters by Lisa Wingate. And I, she's one of my favorite authors. I love her. Amazing yes. stories. But um, in this book, this is the quote. It says, if you keep looking backwards at the obstacles you think are behind you, you are actually still that are actually still ahead. Hold on. Let me start over. Yeah. If you start keep, again. yeah <laughs> that's a do over. Okay. <laughs> if you keep looking backwards, all the obstacles that you think are behind you are actually still ahead of you. If you keep bumping into the same things over and over again, it's a sure sign you're stuck in reverse. <laughs> keep going backwards. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh, wait. I bumped into that again. Huh? Yeah, I want to read that again. <laughs> First time you're stuck in reverse. It reminds me of the analogy of, have you ever noticed the rear view mirror on your car is really small yes. while the windshield on your car is really big? Mm -hmm. Because we're supposed to be paying attention to where we're going, not where we've been, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paying and, attention to where we've been, we end out and, in reverse. Well, and think about it too. Everything is disproportioned, warped. You don't get a clear view. Mm -mm. Right. No. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. Wow. That is wild. Okay. Well, then let's talk about ways to navigate those echoes because everybody's got them, right? It's guaranteed. So Jen, help us understand how hypnotherapy can help with echoes. Um, it can help get to the root of the echo the hurt of the echo and unleash and, and unburden the echo, so to speak, like release all of that. Um, the emotions that may still be resonating from that echo. And a lot of times just, just having that understanding on that deep level of exactly what was being felt and dealt with at the time, kind of understanding the context as an adult, mm -hmm. if it's, a, if it's an echo from childhood yeah. is enough just to shift it. But yeah, yeah. it's, I, I, I love that inner work for those echoes, because honestly, if you think about it, a lot of that's what it is. Everything we, we deal with that is from the past is, is an echo experience. And I love that acronym. And but as I was thinking about this, I, I also want to make sure that I am giving enough attention, space and awareness to the positive echoes that I have in my life. Yes. Because That's the rehearse and remember thing, right? It we builds about last week. It builds that positive, that forward looking, that limitless, Look, limitless shield, possibility the type, the limitless possibility attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's a really important thing to bring out to give give enough attention to the positive echoes. And I 
you know, I just want to do a shout out to Jen, just in working with Jen um, and going in and doing some hypnotherapy and the experience of limitlessness. Yes. It's profound. Just being able to shed the yucky, those dark, those dark things that come resurface over and over again and being able to let that go and then sit on the banks or on the top of a mountain and look over limitlessness. Yeah. It's so incredible. It's the peace is really incredible. Yeah. It is. And and the I just being able to feel that the boundless power that you have as a human being Mm -hmm. in that state is really incredible. I love watching um, individuals come to that aha moment or that understanding of like, I'm kind of a cool person. You know, they're kind of great. (laughs) I'm kind of a great person. They're starting to see their innate worth. And that is just such a beautiful thing to experience when somebody starts to get how, they they are a child of God and they are worth, yeah, just amazing stuff. It just and I love that. That's why I just love doing this. Well, and it's the perfect compliment for helping people understand the creator based way. Yeah, because we run with you know you're the creator of your life experience. You know you have within you all the power you need to grow and progress. But if you're struggling with that, hypnotherapy, you dig into those echoes, and all of us. Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. That really is who I am. Yeah, it is a perfect compliment for the creator based way. I just love it. What about um, the idea of not owning, not and and understanding that the thought that shows up, that Mm -hmm. cognitive skill that you can choose and opt out if you want to? Mm -hmm. Have you have you guys had experience with that? Yeah, all the time. On a daily basis. <laughs> uh, my like one of my favorite internal phrases is that's not helpful. <laughs> we'll think something else. Not helpful. Let's think something else. Yeah. That's there are not mornings helpful. that I spend that whole morning with not helpful. Try another right. one. Well, yeah. that's helpful. That's not kind. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Is it kind? Is it helpful? Is it true? Is it, it true? Might- is it true? You know, that's that's what takes the steam out of mind because I basically question it. I almost like I am an attorney. I will question and say, now, is this absolutely true? Or does it just feel like true? Or does it just feel like it should be true? No, is it absolutely true? And then that's sometimes I'll be like, oh, my God, let this one go, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Because if, so not, great- if it's not helpful, true, or kind. Okay. Yeah. Then not worth keeping. Yeah. Throw it in the garbage. It. Yeah, just dismiss it. Throw it in the garbage. Yeah. Yeah. But then you run into the trick of how do we catch those thoughts? And that's where mindfulness comes in, right? The CMH, CMH coaching, the C, compassion, which we are doing pretty good at being compassionate to others and to ourselves. Talked about that a lot. But the mindfulness, that M, just being able to realize the thought is there is an act of mindfulness. Yeah. Well, we're exhorted to watch our thoughts. And I never really understood that until I got into mindfulness. I'm like, watch my thoughts. You know, I always, I was able to watch my words because, you know, all of a sudden they're coming out of my mouth and I'm like, maybe I shouldn't be saying that, but didn't realize, you know, there's, there's a whole process behind that until you started to become aware and, you know, yeah, watch your thoughts. So much easier to discern if you're, yeah, I do a little mindfulness practice every morning and a lot of mornings I'll try to talk myself out of it. (laughs) <laughs> oh, it's 20 minutes I could use for something else. I've got this other thing I want to do, or it's really doesn't make that much difference. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. But being able to <laughs> catch behind. you don't have time for it. <laughs> right. But it makes a huge difference. It rests our brain. What are you going to say, JC? I was, I was thinking, you know, being able to recognize for me, and this is something that I've learned in working with you two over the past year is where am I feeling it at in my body? You know, yes. am I, and that's am I starting, yes. Am I starting to feel anxious? Mm-hmm. Like 
what is that thought creating in my body? Is my heart rate going up? Am I starting to sweat? Am I thinking of ways to escape? That's that's a biggie for me. How can I escape this? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that fight, flight or freeze, or do I want to fight someone? Or, you know, what <laughs> is it that I, I'm yeah. experiencing right now? And then like Jen says, always says is get curious. And get right curious. Here, it's that when you train yourself and this becomes a pattern for you, a system, you systematize it. Okay, I'm having these thoughts. Don't realize I'm having these thoughts. Oh, crap. What's going on with me? What? Whoa. And then being able to stop, whether it's take a breath, three big, huge breaths, stomp your feet, raise your arms, you know, just ah, warrior pose, whatever, but break that thought cycle and then get curious with it. Mm -hmm. And and you can do it really quickly or even on Saturday when Jen was doing the, the tapping technique, you know, I'm feeling that way. I'm going to, whoa, I'm going to tap on this a little bit, even yeah. though I'm feeling so frustrated, you know, yes. working through. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It makes a huge difference. My favorite that I've been practicing the most lately is because I am a constant striver to be better mm-hmm. is I heard Instead of trying to be better, be with. Mm-hmm. Don't be better, be with. And so I start on, because it's muscle memory in my brain at this point. Where am I feeling? Where am I feeling it? How can I step out of that? But mm-hmm. what I'm finding is when I start that, sometimes I'll get myself even more churned up. Ah, oh. And so if I'm already churned up, If I can just do the breath, you know, breathe or tap, but whatever the reset is, and then be with, and that comes back to curiosity, like Jen's been talking about, to be with it and just to sit and be aware. Okay, where is it in my body? Just like you said, what does it feel like? Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it dark? Is it light? Yeah, Jen, what were you going to say? Oh, no, I'm just thinking all that, all the stuff. Yeah, yeah. And just looking at it and being with it, especially for me, because I'm a deep feeler, um, when those deep feelings come up to be with it, opens it up and it passes much more quickly because I'm willing to be with it and walk with it almost like I would walk with a friend down the road. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And it is a beautiful way to release, you know, because so much when, when we talked about the, um, the energies being stuck in the body that is a way of releasing those, that echo energy mm-hmm. because you're being willing to curious and then be with whatever's coming up and it will just make itself known and then pass. And yes. offer compassion, right? Yes, offer absolutely. Compassion, compassion, mindfulness, and hope. Yes. yes. Compassion to that part of you or to that feeling. Right. And, and you no, know, this is normal. This is just normal life, y'all. It's what we do. Yeah. yeah. To be I, human. <laughs> Yeah. I have learned that um, with my anger, because I, I was always taught that anger was bad. So you had to like push it down or ignore it, you know, and things like that until I you know, started doing my own work and realizing no anger is, is good. It, it's it's giving you information as long as you're not acting out on the anger. The anger is good. It's giving you information. Mm-hmm. And when I learned to sit with it, literally sit with your anger, sit next to it, like and, and get curious with it. Uh-huh. it as will if pass. it's a friend it will, the anger will pass and it will reveal itself to what it really is. Yeah. So a lot of times it was it's sorrow. Sad. A lot of times it was, you know, you know, a lot of other different things. Or disappointment. Or yeah. Humiliation, or humiliation, loneliness. Or like that. Or loneliness. Yeah, it's just, so, you know, I, I, you know, sit with your first emotions and kind of let them talk to you. Mm-hmm. And if, and if that's all they are and they pass, that's great. But you might learn some other things and there might be more emotions to like discover. Yeah. It's all willingness. I think it's really important. This was something that made a big difference when you're talking about emotions. Most people only have like what? Three to five emotions that they Three to five that they work with. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So go Google emotions different yeah. emotions and go in and look, print it out, have it near you and say, okay, what emotion really is this? Oh, this isn't anger. This is hurt or, you mm-hmm. know, or frustration or 
um, feeling right. Yeah. 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 So when you give it a name, what was it you always say, JC? Name it to tame it, right? Name it to tame it because it it works. Give Mm -hmm. it a name. Yeah. Well, and this one is the one I think that is the biggest for me with the holidays is recognize your expectations. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mine is bring in your expectations. <laughs> recognize your expectations. Remember, it's a 50-50 holiday, just like it's a 50-50 Monday or a 50-50 Saturday or a 50-50 any day of the week. It's a 50-50 day. You're not going to have candlelight and glowing perfection for 24 hours just because you call it Christmas. <laughs> you have to recognize your expectations. Yeah. And for me, when I started to recognize that Christmas was a 50-50 day, it got to be a whole lot more fun because mm-hmm. I wasn't striving for that perfect day. I love that. And looking at and recognizing the moments. Yes, the moments, they're so great. Those powerful moments. Like we put up our Christmas tree yesterday, last night, and, you know, just turning on the lights of the Christmas tree. The moment. That was a moment. It was a moment. It was like, and they all worked. I mean, that was another moment. That's a big deal. (laughs) But yeah, just what are those moments? Because Mm -hmm. where's our focus? If we focus on those moments, that's going to bring us that peace and that mindfulness and that compassion and that hope. If we focus on the negative moments, how's that going to feel? Yeah. Yeah. So, so good. It is true. Well, Jacob T. Marley will be a real asset to book club this month as we remember the echoes and we keep going through. That's going to be really fun. It Going forward, us. we have mastermind tonight. Just saying, I was very nicely reminded. All oh, my mastermind girls, I'm so sorry. I really thought it was a different day, but I'm ready. We're going to do it. Okay. So, mastermind tonight. JC, can you talk to people who don't know about mastermind and kind of explain what that is? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Mastermind is an incredible, powerful tool that will enable you to grow. It will challenge your thought process and enable you to grow in ways that you didn't think you were able to grow. And when we grow, uh, what I always coach my doctors on is, you know, they're like, why isn't my business growing? Why is my team behaving like this? Why is, why is, why is this? And it all comes down to one common denominator. And that begins with you. And you have to be first and you've got to work on you and you need to have people around you to challenge your thought process in a good way and help you start to think differently and question because our beliefs aren't always true. We are really good at making limiting beliefs. It's true. We're creative. (laughs) We are creative. So in that mastermind, if you're looking to, you know, maybe you want to propel your business forward, this is a great place to come. It's going to help you start to think differently so that you can move your business forward. If you're looking for weight loss and you just haven't been able to figure out how to break through that, whatever it is, you bring that problem to mastermind. If you're looking at, I, you know, I have so much I'm anxiety. I'm so tired of yelling at my kids. Yes. Oh my gosh. Whatever it is, there are so many. You could, we could go on and on about how the things that we talk about and how it affects our lives, but yeah, it begins the, with you and you're worth it to invest in yourself. Oh, totally. Because what happens with you affects everybody as it ripples out, right? It's the ripples in the pond. The girls that have been doing mastermind with us the last couple of years have all said it. It's so life-changing. They just feel so much more powerful, so much more in their own lives. You know, like they can create the life they really want. Mm -hmm. They're not a victim anymore, which is just incredible. It's such a gift. So that's tonight. And then tomorrow we're going to do coaching clear just like every Tuesday pinky. And we're going to get together and we're going to bring whatever 
Things are challenging and coach on those and then clear the emotional baggage. If echoes are your issue, bring your echoes to Coach and Clear. And then we have a special thing coming up on Thursdays in uh, after Christmas. It'll be first of the year with Jen. Jen, you want to talk just a minute about <laughs> what we're going to start introducing on Thursdays? I should drum roll. Yeah. yeah. Thursdays, I want to say maybe we won't be doing it until February. It'll give everybody. Right. It'll be after the first of the year. Yeah. It'll be after the first year. of the year. Everybody gets still bombarded in January. Right. Um, Plus, it should come with spring. Because it's new life and new growth. We could wait, wait till March, but. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't want to wait. I wanted to start as soon as possible. <laughs> no, but um, I'm going to be offering um, Thursday evenings, um, hypnotherapy, um, group, group, it's not classes, it's group therapy in, in the sense of hypno, hypnotherapy. So you're not going to be talking and sharing things, but um, they'll be themed. So for six weeks, we may work on confidence, which will be interesting because it will, you'll think, oh, I'm confident, but you're going to see how it's going to be areas of your life you can increase that or show up where maybe you didn't know that that was an area that you needed confidence because confidence is also self-esteem, self-love, self-worth, self-value. It's, it's interesting. So we're going to have themed group weeks and um, we're going to be offering them on Thursday nights, at two different times. Would we say seven central and seven nine central, central for the early birds, and then nine central mm -hmm. for the night owls? Yeah, for the, for night the owls. people on the Pacific coast. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that will be very night owl for me, but it'll be fine because <laughs> <laughs> I'll just turn off the computer and go to bed. <laughs> That's right. It'll work out great for you. <laughs> After, but I'm excited about the idea of doing a theme every six weeks or so. Yeah think that's mm -hmm. going to be really, really fun. And there'll be more of that on the website, how you can sign up and how you can be part of that as we move forward. So that's going to be our new exciting Thursday thing. Then this Saturday, we're free yeah. because last Saturday we had this amazing jump start that we've been talking about on Healing Wells of the Bible. You guys, there's a replay out there on the 50-50 page if you haven't seen it and tapping to tap away your holiday crazies because- <laughs> Sometimes your, echoes, your holiday echoes. Yes, yes. But your holiday echoes. Exactly. And then we'll come back and next week there will be another episode of Creator Base Life with more tools and more encouragement and more. Because that's why we're here. We want to be ripples in the pond and we want you to be ripples in the pond that ripple out light and hope and help for everybody around you. So until then, y'all take care and we'll see you in a week. Mm -hmm. Or maybe at Coaching Clear. Or maybe a mastermind. <laughs> yeah. See you soon. See ya. Bye, y'all. I can choose to be happy. Choose to be free. Moment by moment. It's all up to me. Cause what I think about, I bring about. That's the way it is. And there is no doubt. Day by day, I pave the way with every little thought I think. Thanks for joining us today in a creator-based life. I hope you felt that compassion, mindfulness, and hope you came seeking today. You can find more of it at cmhcoaching.com or on linktree slash cmhcoaching. Of course, any social media outlet, we're there too. Because you felt the benefit and light in this message, please invite those you care deeply about to join us. Help us to create a ripple effect across the globe of compassion, mindfulness, and hope. Then we can create a creator-based life together. Have a great week, y'all. We'll talk to you soon. Moment by moment, it's all up to me, cause what I think